peanut and raspberry, salted caramel. <laughs> this one is parsnip and lime. I've got a ginger caramel. This is a stout caramel. The basil, that's the basil and lemon one, is the green and yellow one. The champagne and Grand Marnier is the white one. I've got a lapsang souchong. This is a pandan one. There's the whole grain mustard one. There's a raspberry and this is chrysanthemum. It's something I've always wanted to do, I think, ever since I left school, but having the right idea was something which eluded me and I just thought, you know, I've just not got that right idea. It's something I've done for a while. I started as a hobby, uh, making chocolates. I just made chocolates once, one Christmas, and I enjoyed it. It was um, good fun. The feedback I got back from it was excellent, and now I've got a chocolate business. <laughs> Yeah, I worked for a television company, I trained as a sound engineer many years ago. Um, I worked for a um, national TV station. And my partner just said, if you'd never do it, you'll never know. And that, I just thought, was so right. If I never do it, how am I going to know? In ten years' time, I might not do it and look back and thinking, I should have started. So that was the defining moment and since then I just thought, yes, I've got to do it. Before I started the business, I was looking at um, products. I mean, I did a little bit more training um, for myself. Um, I was looking at um, the products I was looking to sell, doing a lot of um, kind of research, looking at what other people were selling, what uh, chocolates people liked to buy. And then there was the business side of things. You know, there's so many different things to think about, which until you actually do something like this, you never realise what's involved. At one point, I thought, make chocolates, sell them, sounds a really nice little idea. <laughs> but there's a lot more to it than that. One of my main concerns was, well, will they sell? Once I'd been to a couple of the chocolate fairs, uh, different places that we sold things, I think I soon realised that, yes, I've got something that people want to buy. And move over to the vibrating table. Forces the edibles out. We're finding that things are taking over in the house as boxes of packaging in all sorts of different places, <laughs> <laughs> you know, which were empty spaces at one point. I do like the fact that I don't have to go to work. Yeah. You know, my previous job took me over an hour, over an hour to get to work and back every day, so it's two hours every day. Predominantly, I'm about the flavour. Um, finding flavours that work with chocolates. For example, I do a parsnip and lime chocolate, which I've never seen anyone else use parsnip. And whole grain mustard. That was um, one which I've come up with. I've never seen anyone else do that. And I got a great taste award for that last year. Over the years, I've done quite a lot of travelling. I've been to many places. Um, and it's linked with eating good food as well. I've been to some very good restaurants and I think it's really good when a chef puts together some ingredients on a plate and you get this dish and you think, oh wow, will this work with that? And you find it does and it's really good and I kind of get inspiration from things like that. So in certain places we've had certain ingredients around the world. Um, I've been eating the dish and thought, will this work with chocolate? For example, pandan which not a lot of people know over here, it's from Southeast Asia. Um, it's a pandan leaf, it's got kind of a nutty, bitter flavour. And I just, when I first tried it, I thought, that will work in chocolate, I'm sure. Reykjavik is a spruce chocolate, which is rather strange because Iceland is not known for trees. And yet I'm using spruce flavouring from the spruce trees but Reykjavik was the very first place I tasted spruce in food. So it's inspiration, it might not necessarily be where the ingredients come from, it's all about our mind and my partner's experiences on our travels. I only use single origin chocolate because to me single origin chocolate is like, it's like a fine wine. You're getting characteristics you get from a certain area 
Um, for example, we use a lot of Colombian chocolate and we use chocolate from different parts of Colombia and they all have different flavour characteristics within it. And then when you put the two together, the flavours that I'm using and the chocolates, it's marrying the flavours with the chocolate. So one particular flavour of chocolate will work better, say with a whole grain mustard that I'm putting in it, than a different one, or a milk chocolate for example. The thing about quite a few flavours with chocolate is sometimes it may not work that first attempt, but it could be because I've done something wrong. I might have infused it for slightly too long or not enough because with herbs when you infuse a flavour too long you get a different flavour out of it. But to think about how you're going to present Easter eggs, I could have done just a plain chocolate Easter egg but one thing I've learned is people buy with their eyes so you've got to make things look nice. Also look slightly different to what you can get elsewhere. If I do something exactly the same as what people can buy in the supermarket or another chocolatier then you know, they might go and buy from them. So just try and do something a little bit different. You have to think about things months and months in advance. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I was thinking about these before Christmas. I've recently, over the past few weeks, I've actually been working on chocolates and flavours and new products for Christmas this year. It's very, very hard work, I'll say that to anybody, when you start a business. If someone says it's going to be, it's going to take you, I can say, 100 hours a week, double it. It's whatever amount of work you think it's going to be, double it, if not even treble it. You can't imagine how much work is involved. I do work most of the time. Um, I'm always thinking about it, whereas when I worked for an employer years ago, when I left work, all my time was my time. I could relax, but now I'm always at work. But I enjoy it. It's, it's rewarding. Hopefully I'll be you know, very successful in the future.